compile and debug the GFM. The first step will be to do a flash mass eras of our target, just to ensure we don't have those remaining versions of the secure application to run such kind of things. Let's eras the flash. Then we will launch kubeid and we will import the GFM project inside kubeid. So for the importation, we just select the correct folder, which is gfm underscore four underscore ws, and we will uncheck this folder and also the loader because we don't use the gfm loader sources or project. Then we will launch the compilation of the gfm sbsfu boot and then the gfm appli non secure. And when we compile the non secure, there is a dependency in kubeid that we launch the compilation of the secure. And this is the traces that is expected. So let's do this first. Don't forget your flash mass errors to prevent any issue. And then let's launch kubeid. So file, open project from file system. For the directory, yeah, we started from stm 2 thqws gfm kube firmware hell5v1.3.0, project, nucleo, application, gfm for workshop, okay? And keep this level, just select. And here, as you can see, it proposed to import many things. Please and click on gfm underscore four underscore ws because it was just the folder that's containing the other and then click on the gfm loader because we don't use this application. We are using the loader that is inside a non-secure application and then just click finish. If I switch to project view, Sorry. Here now you should have this, the GFM SBSFU, GFM Appli, which contain the GFM Appli secure and the GFM Appli non-secure. So first I will launch the compilation of the GFM SBSFU boot. So I select the project and I press the hammer. Just show you that in the middleware, you find the embed crypto that is used for the cryptographic part, the MCU boot, which is a sources, open sources of these secure boots, and trusted part is only for TFM when it's needed, but here not really used. Mainly the application is here, and it was more the adaptation that are here. Compilation is nearly finished. Let's check the status together. Possible because it just generated everything. The build is finished with zero error, zero warning. Perfect. So now I propose that we compile the appli secure and the appli non secure. So in the order we should compile the appli secure first, then the appli non secure. And maybe you can remember why the API secure will, I will say, uh, propose some secure services to the non-secure application. So you need to first compile the secure application. But this is addressed automatically by kubeid. If I compile the API non-secure, look at the console first. It builds the GFM API secure. So here again, the middleware, the trusted firmware and the core, and it's where you will find really all those services and all the source of this. In the application part, you will just have the adaptation to our platform and the acceleration when it was needed. The code to use the acceleration is here, but in our case, it's deactivated.
seven bit crypto compilation as it's also used by the crypto services here. Okay, the binary is compiled. Um, okay, it's jammed to the non-secure application, but if I click on GFM Apply Secure, just to check the console log, you can see in the post build that there is the RSA signatures, the number image, it was signed and encrypted, okay? So it will generate some of the post build, uh, a version encrypted and a version unencrypted of this. And of course, the both are signed, but we will see this after. Let's come back to our non-secure application. We faster, as you can see, non-secure have been compiled and exactly the same thing. There is a post build. There is the RSA 2048 for the signature check, and there is also some encryption. The key of encryption is generating during the build. So that means it will be different from one to another one. So here we finish compilation and status is okay for all of them. Let's come back to the presentation. I got a question. Do you think we can use kubeid to flash the generated binaries? In fact, as I just told you, it will be possible for the GFM SBSFU, but for the GFM Apply Secure and the GFM Apply Non-Secure, there have been sign they have been encrypted so we can't flash them directly because it was not the binary generated that we want to flash but i will say the image plus its signatures so it's not possible but we can take the binary from this folder because it where it was generated and then we can flash them and for flashing them i created some scripts so this time i create independent tip, uh, script sorry for each binary so first we will launch or flash the non-secure binary, then the secure binary, then the SBSFU. Then we will press the reset and we should achieve to these traces, which is quite similar to the first on-zone we have done together. Let's do this. First I propose, so we'll come back. So compilation is okay. Um, Maybe interesting just to have a look of the binary generation. So in cube v1.3, in the project, in the nucleo application, GFM for workshop, and it was in the GFM apply, if I will remember, binary. Here you've got the generated binaries. So you've got the non secure encrypted sign, the non secure sign. So not encrypted version of the non-secure application and the same for the secure, okay? So now I will come back to the script and I will flash my different binary. So first I will flash the non-secure binary. It's okay. Then I flash the secure binary. then I will flash my SBSFU. I launch again my third term because I close it before and press the reset button of my targets. So quite similar with what we have seen together before. So everything is ready, I would say. Let's see now how we will debug the code. So in this package delivered, the only um, security that I keep activated was the MPU privilege and the trace zone. This is the only protection. All others have been deactivated. The boot lock, because this is only in production. Once you have done this, you can change anything, so you can brick easily combine with RGP level one. But I don't want to go into details right now. Write protection is not activated. I protect because we will activate it later. And RDP 0.5 or 1. And I haven't I deactivated them by default and we will reactivate the RDP 0.5 after. 
So let's debug. So we need to create a new debug config and we will uh, remove the download of the GFM SBSFU because it's already flashed on our target. Then we will add the load of the GFM Apple Secure and Non-Secure Symbol and then we will be able to debug. The different step, first we'll create a debug configuration based on the GFM SBSFU boot. Then we will remove the download of it. I go quickly because I will do it with you just after. Then we will add the loading of the symbol of the appli secure, the loading of the symbol of the appli non-secure, and then we'll put them in the correct order, and this will be important before just debugging. Okay? And then we will be able to debug. Let's see this. So I come back to my cube ID. First, I will create a debug configuration for the GFM SBSFU boot. So here I do a right click on it, then I do debug as STM32 Cortex M C C application. So here we've got the main, we've got the startup, and you can see we are taking this one, we build it if needed or each time we will load this, we'll download and load the symbol. So I will just click on it and do the edit. I will remove the download because it's already flashed and I don't want to flash it again. Then I will add the secure application. So I just click on add, project, GFM Apple Secure. And for this one, I don't want any download. I just want to load the symbol, okay? Sorry, I forget to select build configuration release and I don't perform the build also. Okay, so GFM Apple Secure release, do not perform the build, do not just download but load the symbol. Then I will add the non secure application release. I don't perform the build, I don't perform the download but I load the symbol. And now what is important in the order, because it will try to put a breakpoint in the entry point of different binary. And I want to stop first on the GFM SBSFU boot. So I will select it and I will move up, move up. I want it to be on the top, okay? I want the second one be the appli non-secure and the last one should be the appli secure. In this configuration, you can debug the three at the same time. So I will say OK, apply, and OK. So by default, it will try to rebuild the TFM SBSFU boot, but here there is nothing to do, so it's quick. Sorry, my PC is a little bit slow. And then it will launch the debugging. I switch to debug perspective. And I'm stop in the main of pl2 main.c, which is in fact the SBSFU. So we are really at the entry point. So now I propose we will set some breakpoint before continuing. So we are stopped here. And so we will jump again to the Project Explorer and I would like to put a breakpoint at the beginning or at, in the main of the GFM Apple Secure here, just to see this jump. And then just a breakpoint here, just before jumping to the non-secure application. So in the GFM Apple Secure, we have to select the core and the GFM core, we can find the main line 1089. And in the GFM SPM services, you've got the non-secure entry. Okay, so let's put those breakpoints. And in the non-secure application, we'll go in the main.c, just line 123. Let's experiment this. So here I go to the Project Explorer. Okay, now I will go in the GFM Apply Secure. I should go in the middleware because the entry point of the function is in the middleware trusted firmware core here you've got 
many files and the one that is interesting us is tfm underscore core.c so tfm underscore core.c I double click I go to the line 189 and it was the main I just put one breakpoint here okay so here is the entry point I will say of the API secure or the main now let's check the tfm underscore spm services this one if you double click on it go to the line 25 you've got non-secure entry it's where we jump from the secure application to the non-secure application that's it for the two breakpoints in the, sec the non-secure appli uh, secure application sorry in the non-secure application we just go in the application user main.c and this time we put a breakpoint in the main which is line 123 okay for you so i think everything is in place now we can just start so i will close this one this one and this one and i keep my execution in debug i go back go back to the debug perspective if i press continue here i i am in the secure application so you can see tfm appli secure we are in the tfm core and this is exactly the jump before uh, just after jumping from the secure boot to the first secure uh, secure application then this one will continue its execution and you can check the traces if you want in the third term should be there yes we can see we're just there so here I'm about, I was about to jump in the non-secure application and I want, would like to show you something. Here you can see secure. This reflects the secure state of your core. That means your core could be in secure or in non-secure mode. For the moment we are in the secure application, so we are in secure mode. I would like to show you at assembly level how we switch from secure to non-secure. So to switch to assembly code stepping, we we'll click on instruction stepping mode. So click on this Y, the little I. Then you should have the disassembly window that is open. And now we use step in. We will use step in from several time. And I would like to find with you the instruction, which is BLXNS, branching to the non-secure code. And in fact, this is a new uh, assembly instruction with the Cortex M33, which do the switch of context of the core between secure to non-secure. And on the next step, if I step in, I will switch to non-secure mode. Okay, so just to show you that we can debug at a really low level and see whatever it's happen in your system. So now we are on the reset handler of the non-secure application. And if I just continue i will stop at my breakpoint that i put in my non-secure application and now i can debug it so thanks this configuration so i'm still in instruction level if you want to go back to c step you have to click and you can go home so it's exactly what i want to show you because tfm is a huge code important not so easy to understand at the first look but here you've got all the tips to debug all this stuff together so you can have a look in the code understand how it works experiment it if i come back to my presentation i think we have covered all those steps and important yes let's terminate the debug session because if we don't do it right now we forget and we will face issue after for connection so don't forget to click on exits. Good. So where do we stand? So first on zone we experiment the TFM SBSFU functionality. Here we compile and debug the TFM SBSFU and the app is secure and unsecure. Next possible on zone, we will activate some hardware protection to the HDP, the 
uh, hide memory protect and the HP05. Again, if you want to stop the hands-on right now, please jump to the board cleanup section. It's quite important.